thank you so much for joining Carrie Rios and myself, Amber Tripp, on our very first podcast series for Clark College Community and Continuing Education. Um, we wanted to celebrate our instructors and kind of get an idea for what they're all about, what their classes are about, and um, just really love on them because they are the heartbeat of our college. So um, without further ado, uh, let me have you introduce yourself with your name and the classes that you teach here at Clark College CCE, Lou. Yes, my name is uh, Luton Jones. I go as Lou Jones. Uh, I teach banjo and I teach uh, ukulele and I've taught uh, mandolin in the bat in the past and I also taught guitar for Doug Smith at one point. Wow, so a uh, mandolin as well. That's awesome. Um, so what inspired you to teach these classes in particular? Well, I like Clark College. Uh, I've always driven by it over the years thinking what a cool looking college, <laughs> you know, <laughs> beautiful grounds, all that land, you know, and I yeah. live in Portland. Um, but I'm a musician, a uh, professional okay. musician. I've been playing for 40, 50 years. <laughs> it's hard to believe it. Probably more like 50 years. Um, <laughs> Who's counting? <laughs> yeah, I've been around, you know. And um, the I just started adding on instruments because I taught guitar. Guitar is really easy for me to teach. So I taught things that were a little bit harder for me to teach so that I could learn how to play them too, actually. Oh, wow. Um, and I did play mandolin a lot. I picked up mandolin. Uh, I, I taught for PCC. Uh, uh, Mounted Community College. I taught for uh, the Waldorf School, uh, high school. I was their guitar teacher. Oh, wow. Teacher. So, <clears throat> and I taught for the Multnomah Arts Center for 13 years. Um, wow. Which, which was, um, that's really where I started teaching. And the, the, the truth of the matter is when I, when I applied for that job, somebody said, you should really apply for that job, Luke. It was in Multnomah Village. <laughs> and I went there and I didn't think I was going to get it. You know, I just, but I had a, I had a bio that was pretty strong because I'd opened up for all these national acts and had done all these things. Um, I played all over the place. Very and so cool. the guy was from New York and he looked at it and he said, wow, practical experience, right? Yeah. Uh, and of course he he was part of, his name was Eric, um, Eric um, Dash. And his um, background was, you know, a music degree. I'm an English okay. major, you know, I was a philosophy English major who played music for money. And so right. I was around. I was around these sort of people that were really studied. And we used to have these concerts, and everybody was playing these extraordinarily difficult pieces. So I had to up my game. I had to learn music theory. You know, I had to do it all over again. In some ways, I had to really kind of learn what I was doing and learn the jargon and that sort of thing. Sure. But in my background, when I was in my um, early, very early twenties, I was at uh, Oregon College of Education, which is a teachers' college. So I had taken practicum and I was I was supposed to be a teacher. And my graduate work at Portland State was uh, the PACE program, which was uh, about teaching adults, adult education. So that was my that was my graduate work that I had done. Oh, and of course, great. I went right back into art, and music, and philosophy because I, you know, I, I didn't I didn't finish that program, but I took all the hard classes. Right. Well, I mean, that's all intertwined, right? I have a degree in music. <laughs> I have a Bachelor of Arts in Music. Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, I should probably go back and relearn some theory. Um, so did you, you started with guitar and then you kind of yes. branched off into these other string instruments? Well, I always played mandolin with the guitar. I play harmonica too. So folk singers have to do these things, you know, Right. play with everybody. The banjo is something I stared at for years and thought I should learn that because all my relatives are from West Virginia. And, uh -huh in Texas and Arkansas and all these places and right. I always grew grass right yeah when I was teaching at the at the um, uh, Walder High School one of the kids a lot of the kids there have a lot of money uh -huh. the one I was at they're it's a wealthy crew because I used to teach for the Sun School which was people that were sort of impoverished mm -hmm. you know and then I would go to the, the Walder School right afterwards and everybody was just you know brand new clothes they'd want me to write Night notes day yeah very different but this kid brought in this like very expensive banjo one of the kids there i mean it was like you know like a four thousand dollar banjo and, and i looked at it and nobody knew how to play it though even though they were all they were all trained classical sure. most of the waldorf kids learn stuff and when they're eight years old they'll take piano lessons yeah but i picked it up and i could play it right away which was weird <laughs> and they were going do you play banjo and i said no but i'm a finger picker and and then i so i got a banjo and i thought i should teach this beginning level yeah yeah and it's been a lot of it's been a very that's a very interesting instrument to teach 
because just as I said, I talk about my historical background with it. And then all of a sudden I have all these people from North Carolina to take the class, people from West Virginia. You wouldn't believe how many people just show up for that class that are actually from these places that are maybe have moved here. Sure. Yeah, and they, they're very, they're into the banjo and they want, they want it, you know, so for me, it's something I teach, but it, but it's also, uh, it's, it's got its own, um, I don't know what you'd call it, its own, I, I want to say ethnicity, and I guess that was sort of what it is. Yeah, sure, sure. That makes sense. Is it, is it a hard instrument to learn initially, or, I mean? It's, it's the hardest one to, to teach. Okay. Yeah, because most people don't realize how hard it is. Even the people who love the banjo, and then it's, it's, I have to start really simple. And, so what? Uh, what about the banjo makes it so difficult because i mean i can't play guitar for the life of me, but i think it's because i have a guitar that's too big for me um however i mean i play piano but how, so what makes the banjo as an instrument so challenging well it's basically uh based uh, it's it's a it's a um sitar it's from uh -huh. the sitar family it's actually from africa it's from morocco yeah so the slaves brought it over and it was four strings and so they tune in a modal kind of way which isn't what we would it's not the king's english you know it's a totally different game okay. uh okay. and so um ironically the celts and the scotch irish also have a modal sound which is not the you know the do re mi fa sol do pyramid yeah. they don't do that so it's more dronal sounding sure and so it's it's uh, i call it acquired taste if you hear it you hear it and some people don't hear it because they're used to hearing the traditional uh, approach. You know, some people read on staves and some people learn how to do tablature. But it's interesting how some people get it. For example, when I was teaching one time at Mount Hood Community College, um, I couldn't explain something and I was looking at the tablature and the written music and the written music could not explain what this little thing was, right? You know, they have oh. slurs and things like that. Okay. And all of a sudden it dawned on me that it was going, and I go and I do it was doing something like that. Oh, <laughs> I, like a little scooping well, they, thing. Yeah, they couldn't write it in music. And also I looked at it, I said, Oh, they're trying to say they're doing this tie. They're trying to go, I'm a going to the and then I realized that banjo is a lot of uh, oral tradition. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Well that yeah. makes sense then to the finger picking is there's a lot of patterns, a thousand patterns you can finger pick. Um and it's it's kinda like uh skipping and chewing gum at the same time. You have to be able to do both, but there's a symmetry to singing and playing the banjo. And sure. then there's things called frailing and claw hammer. And it just depends on, some people are really have this enthusiasm. You know how that is in all classes. Yeah. And they might not, yeah. they not be the best student, but they're the most enthusiastic. And they, the, they, they learn more than most people. Like sure. you can watch them actually develop from the beginning and they're, they're, they're actually really wanting to do it. Very and so cool. people come when they think they're overqualified for the class, and then they realize that they're not. Yeah. That they only know a couple of things. You know, be careful with knowledge, right? A little bit of knowledge right, is a dangerous right, thing. Right. right. Well, and then, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then the flip side, the ukulele, that's got to be so much easier. I mean, I have a ukulele and I can strum along on stuff. So it kind of a one end to the other end, right? That's my less no stress in that class. I. When I first taught ukulele for PCC uh, at the um, Friendly House in Northwest Portland, uh -huh. I just got a ukulele and I said, I should teach this. And, and I just kind of quickly looked at the chart. I knew because like you said, yes, yeah, it's, it's kind of a simple little instrument. First, that's what you think, right? Yeah. Uh, it, it can get complex too, but it's tuned in C like a, like middle C on the piano. Sure. So most, most people are familiar with that. The, the Hawaiians actually tuned it more in like the key of D. Okay. So F sharp of all things, you know. Yeah, I key. like it. I like the key of D. The key of D is one of my favorite keys to compose in and also sing in. Yeah. So well, that's Hawaii. The Hawaiians kind of had their own approach to it. And then, of course, it got into all that Nickelodeon, um, whatever you want to call it, um, kind of uh, clownish stuff, you know, the yeah, yeah, yeah. carnival kind of tiny Tim approach, you know, and Tin Pan Alley and that sort of thing. Yep. But it is uh, when I first taught it. Um, like everybody in the city showed up and I usually had classes of maybe 20 if I, you know, but I had like 50 or 60 people showed up with these wow. little ukuleles and I was in this, I was in this place called the Friendly House, which was like this little, you know, it's like a social center, right? <laughs> and, like, and we were in the little kids room, these little oh, chairs. Yeah. 
<laughs> there were all these people with ukuleles. I almost, I almost like I had to go out to my car and leave. I thought I can't do this. You know? <laughs> I had no idea that it was so popular. Yeah. Because I taught guitar classes, but I never had those kind of numbers. Wow. Um, and I'm just looking at everybody going, oh my God, how do I explain this little bit? And then I learned from teaching how to teach the ukulele. Sure. Well, and it's, it's such, a, such an accessible instrument too. I mean, the ukulele. Most I mean, people can push the strings down. Yeah. yeah. And it's not super expensive to purchase mm -hmm. one. I yeah, mean, they're really cheap. You can get, well, some people buy these ones that are basically toys. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I'll be going rah, 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 trying to tune it up for them, you know. That was the really hard part about doing Zoom, by the way. I couldn't Do tune it. Yeah, it was just really hard. Yeah. And I was doing it for PCC and Mount Hood and also Clark. And I was just going, I can't help you. <laughs> I can only tell you. But you were talking about beginning students, right? They're going, yeah. which way do I turn it? And you're staring at a screen. You're going, oh, God, this isn't. Yeah. But I always <laughs> told people to go to a music store and have somebody do it for them. Before there you they go. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, so give me an idea who the class would be designed for, or either class. Who, who would be the student who should take the class? Well, um, just about anybody can take ukulele. You know, that's really across the board. That's an uh, interesting class because um, people who are just looking to do something, you know, they show up. I would say that um, there, there are these people, these ukulele clubs and stuff, and there's these people that show up and they're all ready to go. And, and I'll put out, I'll hand them something and they've already got a book with it in it. They've already oh, yeah. got their, they're already ready to go. There's the real, it, it, people are very enthusiastic about the ukulele. So I try to find songs that are like, um, do the gambit, you know, sure. start with like the old folk song approach, maybe throw Hawaiian stuff in, and then eventually get into some of the novelty songs, you know, okay, sera, sera, and things like that. It, it, you, you see, that class always usually goes pretty good. The ukulele class is, is pretty yeah. strong. Awesome. The banjo, the banjo class, like I said, it's, it's, um, a little more complex and so when people take it they have to kind of consider that um because they'll say i want a finger pick no it's not easy to do and and a lot of it is like i said is um oral tradition and i've been playing forever so i can do things that i can really have to slow down to show people because sure. i've already done it for money you know what i mean it's like when you go to the bank and someone's just flying around yeah and yeah, all you yeah. did is you did a deposit and you're staring at them and they're 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 multitasking like you're right it's just like a skill that, and then they have to train somebody and somebody and they're going oh god i have to train this person you know <laughs> and you, you always see the person being trained going oh god you know and the yeah. person's going i do this i do that you know i've always said secretaries and mechanics are the geniuses of our society really <laughs> well they're yeah. genius of taking care of my car for sure <laughs> Yeah. Um, would you mind whipping out your the banjo or the ukulele one after the other and giving us okay, a little? Here's the ukulele. So the first string is a G string, and we're at a very high frequency. Um, this is a tenor. I oh, actually did I was, an I was wondering. It looked a little bigger. <laughs> yeah. I did an interview for PCC and and because it was so fast, I didn't have time to think about it and I wasn't really paying attention, but I was talking about tenors and sopranos. You can get sopranos, which are obviously a higher pitch, sure. you know, in singing. But for some reason I was like, I said, higher, lower, higher, lower, because these things are so weird. They're hard to describe. So this is a tenor and a soprano, of course, would be a, a smaller, even smaller yeah. to the soprano. And then you have what they call the, um, uh, tenor, I mean the, uh, da, 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 the um, I was going to say showcase, no, 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 what's it called? Um, you have the baritone, okay. and then you have um, one that's just a little bit bigger than this, and um, for some reason I can't think of the name of it right now. It'll come to you. Yeah, it's um, it's like a standard one that's a little bit bigger, it's okay. more in the middle. I keep wanting to use the word show or something, but it's... it's um, <laughs> All right, well, most let her rip. Get, most people get this one, yeah. which is the tenor. Okay. And um, if I go like this, my dog has fleas. That's why I know I'm in tune. It actually has, has fleas. Da, 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 da. And, and of course, what I show people right off the top is, you know about chords because you're a music I do. <laughs> so if I have a C chord, I need a C. You know, you have the one, two, three, four, five, six yep. approach, right? 
I need a C, I need an E, and I need a G. Well, right off the top, I've already got a C, I've already got a, um, an E, and I've already got an A. So technically, this is a C chord here, the bottom three strings. So when I add the G string, it's going to be, uh, do, 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 do. that's that's going to be, oh, I see, yeah. I, I'm going to stop at the first string. So it's actually from the top. So G, C, and E, that's a C chord. Yep. And when I add the A chord, it's a C6 chord or A7, A minor 7. So we can actually do a song right off the top. We can do Fly Like an Eagle by Steve Miller. I always show people this because a lot of people don't understand what chords are, that they're like little choirs, right? Yeah, they so are. So if I just played an, an A string and I went like this, time keeps on slipping into the future. Hey, let's sing. You know, nobody's home, right? <laughs> but if I do the whole, the whole game, time keeps on slipping into the future. See, so everything's there with me. Yep. And there's this, the seven is um, down here. The, yeah. Time keeps on slipping. If I call her an A minor seven, then I could, if I was going this direction, this would be the seven up here. Ah. Yeah. So this is this is some jargon that I don't really throw out too much. It confuses people sometimes. Sure. So I usually will write it on the board and I'll say, there's seven letters in music. Because sometimes people show up uh, and they play a lot like I did when I was younger. They do it with their intuition, which is fine. Yeah. But I always figure since you're paying money and Learn why not? Theory learn a little bit of it because it kind of helps yeah some people just excited as hell about it and other people are going oh god make it stop mommy they don't want to know <laughs> they don't want to know any of that they just want to play yeah. so i tell them it's okay to just play shapes and sing you know you that's what too so i usually go but if but if i go either one direction then i'm going to lose some of the people because sure. some people are there going god this is like i'm in kindergarten why is he doing it this you know <laughs> and other people and other people are going um uh, i want more i want more tell me more people really want to know what's going on yeah so we already know that's the, t the key we're in so then when we start pushing down our fingers we do an exercise first because we have to get some tactile symmetry going so the things aren't so difficult we we, we learn how to hold it sure. where to put our, our thumb especially with these little stringed instruments your thumb's a big player you can yeah. use it to balance yourself and how hard you hold it down. And, um, you know, we talk about the frets, so you don't touch the sure. metal sort of thing. And usually most people can pick that up on the first class. They kind of get it, you know? Yeah. Um, and then you sing, you know, one of the ones we do, you know, um, Oh, my darling, oh, my darling, oh, my darling, Clementine, we had lost and gone forever, gentle sorry, Clementine. That's just two chords. So we start with learning the one chord approach and then we start doing um, two chords, and then we do the three chord turnaround. And you go, go on there. from there, yeah. And everybody Perfect. wants to get to Israel, and they want to get to these these songs that they've heard on the radio. Sure. And the yeah, songs. well, makes yeah. sense. Um, awesome. It's a good little instrument, you know, a, a little a good little campfire instrument without lugging a guitar around. Um, well, it's from Portugal, you know. Yeah. It's actually, the yeah, travelers. So it's, like, it's a little guitar. Like the traveling yeah. minstrels, right? That's what they whipped out of the all uh, their backpack. Yeah, like the lute, you know, or yep. the, the mandolins related to that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little cute. Little Very bit. cool. Would you mind playing us just anything on the banjo, just the quick little Wait. riff for about yeah, thirty seconds or so? Yeah. <laughs> I just want to hear some banjo music. Because why not, right? Not that you'll learn this in class, but. So you have to tune up, first of all. We do that anyway. Yep. So I have five strings on the banjo. I have a high G, which was added in the 1800s, um, probably to Europe Europeanize it a little bit. Sure. Make it so a little more Anglo friendly so we can hear what's going on, because it's an octave, right? An great octave. Anglo Saxon, man. Yeah, we like resonation or, or resolution, and we like harmonic connection. And so that, that sort of, when you get into the blues, You'll find that it's tuned when they go into tunings it's a lot like the banjo it's a different way of hearing um, the way the narrative works and that's the high g and that's a d there and there's the, the mid-range g and then we have a b string and we have
have one more uh, D at the bottom. We're tuned in. The G, we're tuned in G. We can you can tune to C or D. Awesome. All right, Lou, let her rip. Something like that. Very nice. Yeah. So at some point you could potentially learn that, but uh, I'm guessing since this beginning bench, Joe, maybe uh, we're starting at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of it is tricks, and a lot of it is um, um, that I played for a long time. So I have, I've already decided that I can play. That's one of the things I always teach adults is that they um, have a tendency to um, question um, their um, decision. Sure. Uh, the, the, uh, the kids are literal and yeah. and, and adults are a little bit more into uh, philosophical <laughs> and, and uh, they have a lot of cognitive skills, right? Yeah. They've already done things. And so that's the good side is they have cognitive skills. They've, they've completed things. They've done things. Yeah. So they're adding on something with all this other noise in their head. I'm going to do this too, even though I've done all these other amazing things, you know. Uh, and so what we usually do is we try to... Um, I get people to say, you know, I say, if if you um, trust yourself, yeah. like if it, if it seems right, it probably is. You don't need me to tell you that. Sure. You know, your your intuition is pretty strong. You've heard the radio before. You've heard things, how narratives go. So yeah. Awesome. I could almost. I actually was talking about doing a class sometime on just the aesthetics of it all. To talk of talking about this, you know, sure. like an actual lecture where I just talk about it. Uh, yeah. I like to teach, but you know, teaching is like you know. It's um, it, it's it can be repetitive, you know. You start getting repetitive, you know. I and sometimes I, I try to mix the dialogue up or the narrative up a little bit, so it's not so. It's like it's fun, at least, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love it. I uh, I I have a ukulele. I should probably get that thing out and dust it off. Um, I do not have a banjo, and nor do I want to learn how to play banjo. However, if I had to learn banjo, I would totally uh, check out the beginning banjo class. That sounds amazing. Um, Lou, we got to kind of wrap things up. So I just want to say I appreciate your time. It's awesome to hear you play and to learn a little bit about the instruments. Um, if you want to take beginning banjo or beginning ukulele, you can sign up for the class at online at cce.clark.edu. Um, it'll be under the subcategory of, you guessed it, music, because <laughs> of its music. Um, if you uh, want to call in instead, you can call 360 992 Two nine three nine, and someone will help you register. All of our most up-to-date information is online on our website. So if you want to know who the who, the what, the where, the when, the how, the cost, anything like that, um, just pony on over to the website and check it out. Um, Lou, thank you so much for explaining and being on with us and giving us a little riff on the banjo. It was amazing. I appreciate your time, and uh, hope to see some people in your class. Yes, okay. okay. Well, thank you so much. Take care. Okay.